Hello everyone, welcome back. I hope you're doing well. Today I thought we could get caught up on the new launches. There's a lot of new stuff I feel like launching even at the beginning of the year. This is usually a lull period for releases. We're gonna be going into spring, into Valentine's Day, that type of stuff. But even with that, I feel like this lull has still had quite a few things. So let's get caught up on it. Just chat about the new stuff coming out. I love giving you guys my thoughts on if I'm gonna pick stuff up, if I have picked stuff up, just all of that. And I love hearing your guys' thoughts on it too. So let's just get in. To it. I don't even know why we're starting it here. I really don't because like kind of like yawn who cares I'm so sorry, but there is some new stuff coming out from REM beauty This is a new eyeshadow palette. Thank you next is what it's called There's also some eyeliners as well looking at the palette. I mean, it's pretty and fine You know, I've really tried with REM beauty. I bought stuff when it initially launched I did a video recently like last month talking about those purchases because it had been a year And also I tried out a few new things and just nothing hits super hard with the brand Like I have the eyeshadow palette in midnight snack, which is like the cooler toned one and like like it's fine, you know, like it works. It's it's just missing something and I feel like it's almost an anomaly because I do think out of all of the people that can have a brand, all the celebrities that could have a brand, I think it makes sense for Ariana to have hers. She had her perfumes and I don't think it's a weird jump to go into cosmetics, you know, but I don't know, there's just something not quite clicking and I don't know what that is. The like best part to me about the brand is the price point. Sometimes celebrity brands can be a little bit more expensive and this one I feel like is priced not too expensively. You know what I mean? But even then we can get into like, but is it still worth it? But that's like the one thing I like the most is at least it's not like full on Charlotte Tilbury prices. You know what I mean? So I'm not gonna get that. <laughs> I'm not gonna pick that up. Speaking of Charlotte Tilbury, there is a sneak peek of some new uh, matte, but like the liquid cream blushes. These I think are exciting. I'm honestly surprised this hasn't happened earlier, but I do think these are gonna be a hit. I will probably pick one of these up when they launch. I don't think we have a ton of information on them yet. It'll be interesting that they're matte. I hope that they're a really good formula and I hope they're not like like super super matte like I hope they're that like nice mattifying look without being hard to use sometimes that can be the case but um, I am excited for those and I really do like a lot of the wand products overall the only one I don't love is the bronzer and it's more for color than it is for formula I think it blends out really easily and I get why people like it but sometimes the color just feels a little too red to me overall but these look exciting I do want to try them some really awesome news Glossier is gonna be at Sephora I think this is a super great movie for Glossier. It's weird because for me, Glossier has never really lost its luster in a lot of ways. Like I still think of it the same way I did back in like, I don't know, 2017. And so when it was really hyped and popular, I really feel like it was ahead of its time, right? Like we're into creams now and that clean girl look, like it was doing clean girl look before it was as trendy as it is now when people were still doing like full on full faces of makeup, full glam, you know, the wings, the lashes, the blocky brows, like Glossier was coming out then but I think it's a good move for them to go into Sephora's so it'll be interesting to see if that affects their price or if this is gonna be one of the more affordable brands at Sephora and all of that but um, I think it's a smart move for them honestly and I'm surprised they didn't do this earlier I think it would have helped them if they had done it just a little bit earlier while they were still more in their prime and then kept that wave going and kind of transitioned with stuff but it'll be interesting to see how it goes they also have a new deodorant that is also a thing that's happening I don't know I want what it smells like. I wonder if it smells like the perfume, like Glossier U, but a deodorant. I think a lot of people would like that, but you guys, I've mentioned this, like I am over all the deodorants. I just use my Dove deodorant. I've gone on a deodorant journey. Do we want to say that? <laughs> I've done the deodorant journey. I have had many consequences from it, not only smelling and stinking, but also literally having reactions and my underarms being so sensitive to, I think it's like the baking soda or something that's in them. So I have just been like, you know, it's fine. I'm sorry. Like I <laughs> just stick into my regular deodorant. I'm not trying other ones. I don't care. Okay. <laughs> a new product from e.l.f. Man, e.l.f. is just coming out with so much great stuff. I really feel like this year is going to be the year of the drugstore, not only because prices are just so fucked, like everything's so expensive, and I feel like more people are gonna be drawn to drugstore prices just to save a little bit of money on cosmetics. Like we don't need makeup, so if we can get great products for less, I think that's gonna be a really big thing, but I feel like NYX and e.l.f. really are coming out with some great products, and these are the lip lacquers. They're gonna be $3 a piece. $3, <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's 
pretty good. I guess these are just four new shades added to their lip lacquer line, but they're really quite pretty and it makes me want to try them out. I didn't even realize they like had these. So I might pick those up. I've just, you know, I've been enjoying the Elf stuff, been enjoying the just drugstore in general. There are a lot of new releases I want to pick up. I want to mention some more makeup news. That is so unfortunate. It makes me so, so sad, but you know, it is what it is. High Love has closed down. They are not going to be a brand anymore. I believe on their website, they are still selling product until they run out of it. So if you want to get some stuff at a great discount, that might be something you want to check out, but it makes me so sad. I really love their palettes. I really love the nine pan palettes specifically. So that makes me so sad to lose them, but I feel like we're going to be seeing a lot of that this coming year. And it's just a part of the kind of natural boom that happened there, all these brands. And now that makeup is not quite as popular as it was. Like I still think there is a healthy beauty community. There is like a thriving beauty community still in a lot of ways. It's just not trending like all over the globe like it was, you know, like just because activity right now isn't at peak levels doesn't mean there isn't something really awesome going on still. It's just not at like, you know, levels that no one expected or seen. I mean, it was such a huge boom for a while, you know? So um, yeah, they are closing down. I, I know there's so many, I think like there's stuff with Morphe going on, like there's, <laughs> it's a lot going on. But that one personally makes me pretty sad because I really like their palettes. They would send me PR. I had a code actually with them. So yeah, it makes me pretty sad, but it'll be interesting to see how else the year unfolds when it comes to brands and who stays around and who doesn't. Another drugstore release though that caught my eye, this is from Flower Beauty. It's the Low Light Liquid Contours. I kind of want to pick these up because I really hope that these would be similar in formula to the Charlotte Tilbury. But like I said, I just don't like the color of the Charlotte Tilbury one. So if I liked this color better, that would be awesome. I haven't picked it up yet though. Let me know. Have you guys tried this yet? Do you like it? It's like a matte finish. So I like that actually about it. I feel like for cream bronzers, like I do like a matte finish as long again as it's easy to work with. Like I don't like difficult to work with products ever, like no matter what the finish is. So that's something that I have my eyes on for sure. There's like a collaboration with Minnie Mouse and Makeup Revolution. This is something I think is pretty, like I do think the packaging is pretty and I think it's girly. It also kind of seems very like Valentine's Day-esque with like the pink, like it fits that vibe to me, but I don't think this is something I'm gonna like go out to try to find, even though I think the packaging is cute, but you know, packaging, what do you do with that after you open it? You throw it in the trash. Something I'm surprisingly looking out for are these new products from the Sephora brand makeup line. They are gonna be coming out with some new blushes, highlighters, and just some other stuff as well. And I am looking at the highlighters for sure. Like I just, I really feel like so many brands are coming out with highlighters this year that has me so excited. So I wanna definitely check them out. I like the embossed look on these. I like the packaging and I think it's nice to have something a little bit more affordable and I kind of want to know how it stands up to the other highlighters that are coming out this year. So that has me excited. One of the really, 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 really big things I want to find this year and these are coming out. We don't have a date yet it seems, but the baked blushes from Kosa's, uh, yeah, definitely a hundred percent. Baked products in general, like I want a Laura Geller like resurgence, okay? I want those types of products to come back into style. It only makes sense to me because I feel like they're kind of that middle ground for makeup where you can do something where it looks made up, it looks a little bit more glam depending on what you want, but also you can do a more natural look. And I just feel like baked products look so great on so many different skin types, on so many different ages of skin, and I just, I'm excited for it. So these blushes have me beyond excited. Can't wait to see what they're gonna look like. I want those. <laughs> I really, 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 really want those. There are quite a few new perfumes, and I know I mostly talk about perfume on the perfume channel, but I thought I would mention a few here. From Mesa Margiela, the replica line on a date seems enticing. Like, I definitely wanna smell it. I'm not gonna pick it up just off the bat, I don't think, though, because it has some patchouli in there and I'm a little worried <laughs> about the patchouli because it's also a lot of florals, but I definitely want to smell it and I feel like it's a perfect time to come out because of Valentine's Day and like it's called on a date, like to initially launch a fragrance, it seems like a, a smart idea of them. There's also a new flanker for the YSL Black Opium line. This one is the Le Parfum. Boom. I believe this one's really just amping up the vanilla and coffee notes that are in here. So I definitely want to smell that one as well. Black Opium to me is one I enjoy, but it's not one that I like connect with on me, if that makes sense. Like I like it on a tester strip, but like spraying it all over me, I never feel like myself in it. You know what I mean? But I want to smell it. And then there is a new one from the Armani My 
Way line as well. This one is the just My Way Parfum. And I actually really like My Way, even though it's like a tube row scent, it's very bubble gummy. It's like tangy yet sweet. And uh, I like it, but on my skin, it turns soapy in a second. It turns so soapy and like kind of headache inducing. So I don't like the original My Way. I'm interested to smell this one. There's a lot of tube rows. There's vanilla bourbon. Hopefully that vanilla bourbon, like a richer, deeper vanilla will really round it out. So I almost smell it, but I'm not buying any of those. I don't tend to have the best luck with designer perfumes in general, but um, yeah, those ones caught my eye for sure. Like I wanna go smell them. Obviously, I think we all know at this point that the Odin's Eye single shadows have come out. I get Odin's Eye PR, I'm an affiliate with them. And if you haven't seen it, I did a whole video watching. So check that out. I definitely would have picked some of these ones up, like not maybe the whole line, but I definitely would have grabbed some of those single shadows. And I think that's an exciting launch. I feel like another thing, like not that I've neglected my single shadows, but I do kind of want to get back into single shadows and different collections from indie brands when it comes to singles and stuff. And I feel like those kind of reminded me of that. Like after I got those, I've been playing with them and all that. I did go and buy from Davina the Moonscapes shadows, which are like really sparkly, like neutral shadows. So I have a feeling that might be a trend this year for me as well. Okay, I really thought there was more. Like I really did think there was more. Shantika has announced their spring 2023 collection. There's two blushes, a quad, some lip products. The blushes look really pretty. I like the packaging. The colors are soft, very much like a spring collection. But we all know Shantakai stuff is so expensive. The blushes are $75 a piece for a single blush. And I'm sure they're gonna look really pretty. I do think the, the products are pretty high quality, but I don't know if that's gonna be the one to get me. <laughs> like I'm gonna bust out my like bronzer, highlighter, blushy thing I bought last year from the spring collection, I believe. Maybe it was summer, but I'm gonna bust that out. I really like that. <laughs> And I'm gonna live through this new collection with the old one that I actually really liked. And to be honest, the quad to me is kind of like lackluster. It's just like sad Easter to me. Like that's what I look at. It might look really great on the eyes actually, but just as a picture, I'm just kind of like, no, thank you. And speaking of that, we need to talk about the pastel collection from Natasha Denona. Like seriously, when this released or like, you know, I don't think there was actually a lot of like run up time. I think it was like Christmas day. So it's been a little bit. I do own the highlighter. I bought that thing. Cause I just had to know. I was like, is this actually pastel? Is it duochromatic? Is it just like an overspray? Is it actually color changing? And I feel like my conclusion, which I have the products, you would think that I should know for sure but I still feel like I don't. I don't think it's an overspray. It does feel like the actual powder is a little bit more colored, at least on the top, but it just doesn't actually translate to the color. It's just like a literal like gold. <laughs> it's just a gold highlighter to me anyway. That's what I get from it. Like I, you know, wiped my whole finger on it. I've been using it and I just, I don't see the color necessarily like disappearing like a traditional overspray at least, but you don't get any of those pastel colors from the highlighter. So you see this golden swatch, that's what it actually looks like. Like, I know <laughs> we hope that it would be more special, but it's not like it's the worst. It's just, it's $42 of all the highlighters in my collection. It's not in my top for sure. And then we need to talk about <laughs> this little uh, mini eyeshadow palette. Honestly, the real reaction I had when I saw it, I was like, oh my God, that's so ugly. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I was like, that is literally the Jubilee palette's ugly little sister. Why, why? And then why are we t calling it pastel? Now I will say, I do think Natasha Denona has a way with shadows. She makes some really pretty looks. She turns some stuff out with these shadows. I will give her that, but it's not doing it for me. I don't want to pick that up, you know, no. No. Man, everyone's coming out with deodorants. Oh my gosh. It's like, I guess that's the new thing. I think body care will be pretty popular coming up. And I also think hair stuff is gonna be really, really popular. I'm over here, the most oily haired girl with three strands of hair. And I'm like, I think I should start doing an oil routine and blah, 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 like girl, maybe. And I still kind of am like, no, but maybe it'd be good. I just feel like that type of content has been getting me. And I feel like I am the least likely person to be drawn into it. So I can't imagine anyone who has like normal, you know, 
nice hair. I think that they would also be sucked in to wanting to try some hair stuff. So I think hair, body, and fragrance are gonna be pretty big coming into 2023 and I kind of think moving forward. Not that makeup isn't, not that skincare isn't, but I feel like they've had their moment and things kind of just like switch off and then come back and all that. And I think that's the new directions we're headed. There are some new nine pans from ColourPop. These are the Sage the Day and Petals on Point. And I thought these were actually pretty nice. I mean, the Petals on Point we've seen a little bit, but the Sage the Day I thought was pretty, even though we've also kind of seen this one. I did think that it gave me kind of the Mandalorian vibes, like the little Baby Yoda palette that they they came out with but I still think this one's nice and I do like this kind of more adventurous color story. I don't know if that's just me but I do think as much as ColourPop still comes out with their neutral palettes I do think that they've been releasing a little bit more truly colorful palettes. I feel like the Aurora palette that came out that big one that one is actually a lot more colorful. I don't know they've just been doing actually more little colorful palettes you know medium colorful palettes and big ones as opposed to just like pops and uh, that's kind of interesting. There is a new collection from Pat McGrath. This is all for Lunar New Year. And I do like the packaging a lot, but I believe the quad in here, the Venus and Fleur Voyeuristic Vixen quad, it's a beautiful quad. So if you haven't picked that one up, like it is great. I have it in just normal packaging though. So I'm obviously not gonna pick this one up, but if you did like that, I think. The last time I tried to link it, I felt like it wasn't there. So um, if you didn't pick it up, it might be a good time to pick it up. Even though I don't think that this packaging, like, like the background of red really showcases the eyeshadows as much as I like them on a black background, but that's just me. It's a great quad. I really like that eyeshadow quad actually. There's also a new collection from NARS though. They have some Lunar New Year stuff, but I think this one is for spring maybe, but it's an orgasm collection. I mean, <laughs> They'll never give up the orgasm, okay? <laughs> They'll never give it up. There's a blush palette, an eyeshadow palette, and some multiple like cheek sticks. And um, I'm not really interested in the blush palette. Like I think all of these could be great products. Like they're probably pretty dang nice. I just don't wanna add them to my personal collection. You know, like I don't wanna add this blush palette to it, even though I probably could get some great use out of it. I might really like it. The eyeshadow palette, it's a little bit basic. I see the orgasm inspiration, it's all neutrals and two pink. Pinks, um, not really for me, even though I'm sure the quality of the shadows is pretty nice. The only thing that kind of calls to me are the multiple sticks, the two different colors there, but it's another one where I'm just like, eh, I could just pass on it. You know, it's just not enough. And that makes me sad because I would love to buy some NARS stuff, but those things aren't really doing it for me. Oh, I forgot to talk about this perfume, Tom Ford Cherry Smoke, as well as Electric Cherry, some new ones in the line. I don't get on with the Tom Ford perfumes really, like seriously, Ombre leather is the one I like the most out of everything I've smelled, but even that on the skin is definitely pretty strong. It's just not a house that I've really found anything that I love enough to spend that money because it is expensive. Civ. Holy shit, it's $390 for 1.7 ounce. You're not even getting 3.4. Come on, come on. Anyway, um, I do want to smell them though. Another one I want to smell. Lost Cherry is such a like iconic scent from the house, but um, I don't want to just buy those. And we'll see, maybe I'll like them. I have been getting more into cherry scents, so that'd be interesting. As you guys know, the Charlotte Tilbury highlighters have come out, the Architect highlighters, and I have two shades. I have the Moonlit Glow, I have the Champagne Glow. I should have a short coming soon and I also used them in my previous video if you want to see them on. It's also the highlighter I'm wearing today which I did more of like a smoky eye and I had this whole idea. I wanted to do like a little bit more cat like I just wanted to change it up you know and I think that I want to try the tape method. I haven't done the tape method and I don't know how long but I kind of want to try that where you just like smokily wiggle some shadow but you get that crispy line. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> Let me know, do you still use the tape method? But I've just been feeling myself being drawn to more technique and just different styles like that. I don't know, it's been kind of fun. I'm going back to the highlighters, these things, I have them right here. I overall, the actual quality of the product is nice. I do enjoy the product itself. It's more that I really don't feel the luxury component. And for these to cost $48 a piece, it's just so much money. That's almost $50 a piece, okay, for a highlighter. We're just really cranking it up and I feel like, you know, Charlotte Tilbury wants to give off that like idea of luxury, wants to give the vision of it, which I love the rose gold, but these are just so cheap feeling. And even if the packaging was as lightweight as it is, I could get over that if the pans were fitting in here securely and snugly, but I will demonstrate as I did in my last video. 
Okay, that much of a uh, just, you know, thing made this pan fall out. I just don't travel with these. These are gonna come out. The back of the pan isn't solid and I don't know if that's part of why it can't. Someone brought that up in a comment and I'm like, you're right, maybe that is why this doesn't, you know, fit in there as much. I don't know if they're skimping on the pans or if the pans are just different than they've been or I don't really know. I don't have any other compact products like this from Charlotte Tilbury. I don't have the face powder. I don't have the blushes. I only have the cream bronzer, which you guys know I love. And then some of the other products, again, not in compacts like this. So that was disappointing. And you know, even the single shadows that came out this year, I feel like those packaging, again, a little bit lightweight, but I liked the outer little crystals and the texture that was on top of them. I just didn't feel the same feeling. So definitely disappointing. I love the idea of them being sustainable for you to refill them, but I don't feel like they really nailed it with this packaging. Because not only does it feel cheap, but it does make me wonder how these will even stand up in time. You know what I mean? Like how will these compacts actually withstand the test of time to be able to refill them? And so I feel like if you're compromising that much quality and packaging for whatever reason, I don't know if it's just because of supply chain stuff, everything going up, or if it's more greedy. I don't know how much it costs. I don't know. I don't wanna pretend that I know it's like this or that or whatever. At this point, I would have rather have just a nice compact that isn't refillable than one that is sustainable or more sustainable because you can refill it, but it feels so cheap and also I question will it withstand time, which is part of the thing. So those are my thoughts on the highlighter, I know, going off, but it was just definitely disappointing. I was so excited when we got the sneak peek. I've been waiting on those highlighters for a while, and I'm glad I like the formula like I do, and I know packaging is packaging, but I do feel like that's something you're really, you're paying for. There's some new lipsticks from Makeup Forever. These are the Artist Velvet Nude Soft Matte Lipsticks. I really like the way these look. You couldn't like stand them on your vanity, but I kind of like them. They remind me of, you remember, I think they they were Louboutin, Louboutin lipsticks that kind of have that like spiky shape, but they're like crazy expensive. They kind of give me that vibe. I feel like they could have gone darker with the nudes there. I don't know why they didn't like expand the nudes. It's a lot of like pinky nudes, which I'm not even sure I'm into. I like a little bit more brown, but I like the shape. I don't know. I was just drawn into them and usually I don't care about lip products. Okay, this Tarte palette is cute as hell, okay? This one I think is so cute. It's like a little box of chocolates. Like I love it. And I think the tones are so pretty. I don't know, that one, like I'm not gonna pick it up because I don't need it, but I totally get why someone would. I think it's so cute. I actually think that one's cute. I can't believe I'm saying that, but it's tr it's true. $32 for that one. Something I, I kind of want to try because I one of the things I want to do as I'm like trying foundations this year, I do want to get some color correctors and e.l.f. did come out with some. Do you guys remember the color correcting phase? That used to be like a whole thing. It was like a whole thing and maybe we're coming back to it, but I do want to get some green ones just because I have so much redness on my face and I'd love love to see if I can like, you know, bring that down a little bit so that I can try some stuff out. So that's kind of on my list. I just don't know if it's gonna be too green. Like you have to match intensity to intensity, you know what I'm saying? And so I have a lighter skin tone and even the redness I do have isn't like blood red, you know? So I don't need a super opaque green and I just don't know how it is, but you know, for e.l.f. prices, I definitely have some room to try some stuff. But just in general, green color corrector is definitely something on my list. I saw a primer on Ulta from L'Oreal, I think, that was a green kind of color correcting primer and I wanna try that out. I kind of wonder if for 2023, we're gonna be getting a lot more complexion products because Urban Decay also came out with a new product. This is the Quickie Hydrating Full Coverage Concealer. I definitely have my eye on this. I kind of want to try it. It has like a brush on top. Don't know if I'd actually use that, but it has like this big doe foot and I'm I'm interested. I really am. I feel like something, you know, as you age, your eyes, under your eyes is just a different situation. How much product it can take where you specifically maybe have like different wrinkles or different signs of aging, which is normal and fine. There's nothing wrong with any of it. And it's absolutely normal. <laughs> can we normalize it please? Jeez. We should all be like celebrating that we're alive still. That's what really should be happening. But anyway, how product's gonna sit in those areas and whatnot changes. And I do feel like, you know, that's just a journey I'm on, like I've said. So I am interested in trying it and seeing if it's good. I do like the Hydromaniac, you know, more foundation type product that came out from them. So that is kind of 
on my list to try. There's a dewy skin tinted moisturizer from MAC. That looks exciting. You know, one thing that's kind of interesting, I do feel like in 2023, I'm going to be going more out into the world than I even was last year and the year before. And I'm realizing and remembering like how oily I actually am, the reality of it. And my skin is changing, but I definitely am looking for, I like dew and I like moisture, but I do kind of want that demi matte. Like I need a little bit of longevity. I need a little bit of um, mattifying in some ways where I'm just not showing all my pores off and all my texture off. Before I would hear ultra hydrating, plumping, whatever. I would get so excited for that in a foundation, but I kind of want like that middle ground a little bit. Like I want it to be a great formula. I want it to be like medium coverage still, but I am kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> maybe not super dewy for me, okay? <laughs> maybe not everything has to be that. Maybe I have some things I can at least mix it with because when you have all your other stuff on your like skincare, sunscreen, all the stuff, it's like for us oily people, like damn, I look like a mess in four seconds and I just want it to last a little bit longer. I wanna be able to go out and not be like touching up every second. I just don't do, I don't live that life. And so then I just look like a mess, <laughs> I really do. <laughs> I think I'm gonna end it here. I know there's a lot more stuff. I know CoverGirl has some new eyeshadow palettes. I'm really excited to try little quads, but they're so expensive. That's a the thing. They're like 13 something on Ulta. I'm like, what? What? What happened to the drugstore? Were you in Australia? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I know you guys, or Canada. I know you guys always tell me that you're just even more expensive. I'm over here complaining, so I get it. Man, um, but anyway, I'm gonna end it here. I'm just like literally rambling. Thank you guys so much for hanging out today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'd love to know any of your thoughts down below. What are you? excited for is there anything you're excited for because truly it's like i just want to smell some stuff maybe swatch some stuff like that's more what's happening here than actually like buying and trying but i will say it's interesting to me that i'm actually getting a little bit more excited for drugstore stuff than i have been in a while so thinking about doing like a come with me to the drugstore where i'm actually going in store and like seeing what's there because i don't normally go into like a walgreens or a cvs to shop for makeup i tend to just stick to ulta and sephora but i kind of want to go in store see what's there kind of do that whole thing, especially when it comes to different shades. It's so much easier, obviously, to see them in, in person. I'm still rambling. I'm going to leave it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye, guys.